Ever since Minecraft Realms were first announced back in 2013, they haven't exactly had the best reputation. Considered to be too dumbed down, missing too many features while also being considered overpriced for what they offer, Minecraft Realms are generally not recommended by the wider Minecraft community. Are Minecraft Realms a scam, or are they actually worth it? Let's break it down. A Minecraft Realm on Java costs 8 US dollars a month, although all accounts do get a 30 day free trial, which is nice. You can only have a maximum of 11 players online, including yourself, so only 10 if you aren't online. Bedrock Edition actually has a cheaper realms option, which only costs 4 US dollars a month and only supports 3 players, which is interesting. Upon purchasing a realm, these are the options you get to configure it. You can of course invite players by entering their username, you can change the realm name and description, you have 3 world slots of which you can switch between, and for each world you have access to some basic server settings, which realistically are almost all just basic game rules. You can access your realms backups, which is very useful considering realms have almost zero anti-cheat, and then you have the ability to pick from a selection of pre-made minigame worlds or adventure map worlds of which you can install and play. And well, that's it. And this is where the problems begin. Let's talk about the pros and cons of a realm, starting with the unfortunately long list of cons. First of all, for this video I went and bought a realm on Java, but for some reason, and still days later, I literally cannot connect to the realm and would get timed out, or after logging in and playing for anywhere from 5 to 20 seconds, I would eventually get kicked. And no, this was not an issue on my end, I could connect to other servers such as my own, og-network.net, perfectly fine, and I was using a completely vanilla version of Minecraft 1.20.2. No fabric, mods, or anything. So I simply could not play my realm. Now ignoring the obvious issue that I can't play my realm which I paid for at all, the reason I'm telling you this is to highlight the arguably biggest and most annoying problem with realms. There is no console. When you run a server off of your computer or pay for third party hosting, you always get access to a console which gives you a bunch of information about what's going on in your server. If I were to run a non-realm server and were having the same connection issues, I could likely look at whatever errors there are in my console and that would give me at least an idea of how to diagnose it and fix my problems. But here, with realms, I'm completely screwed. I have no idea why I cannot connect to my realm. I can't play with the server files to see if there's anything going on there. There's literally zero methods that I can use to reasonably troubleshoot my issues, and the connection error is so generic and vague that it won't help me at all. I'm not exaggerating either, this section wasn't even meant to make it in the video, but I spent about half an hour resetting the realm's world, turning it on and off, restarting my PC, trying different Minecraft launches, and restarting my internet, and nothing worked. At best I would be able to play my realm for about 30 seconds or so before losing connection again. I still haven't figured it out either, so if any of you know why I cannot play the realm I paid for, please leave a comment. Now, beyond diagnosing connection issues, having a console is almost infinitely useful in other domains of a Minecraft server. Or rather, would be infinitely useful if realms actually allowed you to do anything besides run a vanilla server. You see, realms don't allow you to install paper, spigot, fabric, forge, or anything, which means no plugins or mods. You can't even add the simplest of plugins like essentials, you are stuck with vanilla and data packs. Obviously, I don't need to explain why this is bad. These days, with Minecraft server performance being so poor, even people who want to play vanilla Minecraft will use paper or other server software, which infinitely improves server performance with no plugins. So not having any of these options is just extremely bad. Extremely bad, just like like all of you who are not subscribed, don't make me give you connection issues to the realm of real life. No pressure. Anyways, want to play a mod pack, or for some reason want to play a different version of the game rather than the absolute latest? Too bad. Realms won't even work if you try to access it on a version other than what's newest. Oh, but luckily a recent update allows you to get a free latest snapshot realm to play on, so you can experience even more server instability for free. All jokes aside, back when I used to play a vanilla SMP with friends from 1.12 to 1.16, oftentimes we would not immediately update to whatever latest version of Minecraft was out as many client-side mods had not yet updated and many of the releases 
resources were unstable. A perfect example of this was Minecraft 1.13, where Optifine took months to release as well as Forge, and server performance went from good to abysmal. We decided to wait a bit, eventually updating to 1.13.2 when things had gotten better. While that has improved since, being forced to update your realm as well as not having the ability to play different versions of Minecraft just flat out sucks. Now, from the brief few seconds I was able to actually play on my realm, one thing I immediately noticed was the relatively shorter render distance. It may look normal to you, but these days various plugins exist for servers that allow you to see much further. It's a bit technical so we won't get into it, but all you need to know is that you can see pretty far. So I thought, why don't I just go change my server's render distance in the realm's config, just like I can in a normal vanilla server's server.properties file. So let me go do that. Oh. This is the next big issue with Realms, their horrible lack of basic configurability. Now I understand that they want to keep things simple, but seriously, not even a render distance config option? Normal vanilla Minecraft server.properties are regularly criticized for not having nearly enough config options, but Jesus, this is far worse. Almost all of these Realms config options are just basic vanilla game rules, and there are so many things that are missing. I knew that Realms lacked customization and configuration abilities prior to buying one, but I was actually surprised by how little they give you here. Alright, so continuing on, what else is Realms lacking? Well, three world slots are nice, but when you consider the fact that any server host gives you actual access to the server's files, meaning you effectively have infinite Minecraft worlds, this really seems lackluster. Now, no need to get into detail with this point, but the fact that there is no way for us to remotely access our server's files is just disappointing. Once again, I understand their goal was simplicity, but I didn't actually need to change anything for the normal user, just having the option to access server files in an advanced mode or tab for those that want to would be awesome. Some people theorize this world limitation may be in place to encourage players to buy more than one realm, but I have my doubts. Alright, look, there's probably a lot more cons of realms related to their lack of configuration and customization, but I think you get the point. So let's talk about some of the pros of realms now. And the big one, obviously, is simplicity and ease of access. By design, realms were intended to be used by families and casual players. They weren't made for advanced or even normal users or large communities, but small groups of friends. And in that regard, they have succeeded. Realms are by far the easiest of any server to set up for those who have zero knowledge of server hosting in Minecraft. I mean, all you have to do is buy the realm and click a button to start it. It's clear that young kids, very casual players, and clueless parents are realm's target audience, which they do successfully appeal to. But these days, are realms really that much simpler than a server host? These days, most server hosts allow you to select from a long list of pre-made and ready-to-go server setups. So, for example here, using Shockbyte Server Hosting, who I'm also partnered with, use code EPIC for 25% off hosting by the way, if I wanted to run a Forge server, a Paper server, a Gazer server for crossplay, all I have to do is select the version I want. You can even do similar for plugins. Most third-party server hosting has become substantially more user-friendly, to the point where they only require a few more additional clicks than a realm for infinitely more customizability. Another pro of realms is actually their world backup system. Many third-party server hosts only do backups every hour, if that, but realms do them super often, basically every time you log in and then out, allowing for dozens of backups every few minutes. This is actually a really good system, so credit where credit is due, but I guess you could say that only makes it even for realms' serious lack of security and anti-cheat. Alright, a third pro of Realms is the ability to easily install custom maps and minigames. This sort of ties into the first pro, but having an easy way to install cool adventure maps and worlds is nice, especially for their very casual target audience. Although anybody who even has a basic understanding of Minecraft has access to infinitely more worlds and minigames with a non-realm server still. And the final pro of Realms is their hardware. Now, there's really not much information about the hardware or specs of the systems that Realms run off. However, what we do know is that in 2020, they switched from Amazon Web Services to Microsoft Azure. And rather than purchasing a specific amount of RAM like server hosting, Realm supposedly functioned dynamically and allocated the required system specifications, like memory, based on the Realm's needs. So for example, if 10 people were online the Realm, it might be dynamically allocated 8GB of RAM instead of the 2GB it has with only 2 people online. 
We don't know the specifics as that information isn't public, but it's likely that the technology behind Realms is actually very advanced and powerful. A Realms developer responded to this post on the Realms subreddit, mentioning that Realms specifications aren't shared publicly because they change from time to time. So in general, Realms are reliable for the small groups of players they are designed to handle, but the lack of information surrounding what hardware and specifications you are purchasing exactly is never a good thing for consumers, so take this pro as you will. Enough complaining now though, how can Realms actually be improved? Well, we know that Realms are not intended for any users with even a basic level of understanding of Minecraft servers. So, rather than make them all confusing and complicated, I believe adding an option to Realms called Advanced Mode, where users can access a console either in-game or through a website and have file access, will allow users who want more customization to do as they please, while also keeping things still very simple. Maybe even having a separate, slightly more expensive Realms plan option, similar to Bedrock, which allows for greater customization would make Realms significantly more popular in the community. Furthermore, having an option to switch versions would be much appreciated, as being forced to play the latest version of the game is extremely annoying. At the very minimum, at least allowing players a grace period of a few weeks where they don't have to update their realm to the latest version immediately would be awesome. Going even further, having inbuilt options to switch to Fabric, Forge Paper, and other server software, and then having a system like Data Packs where you can easily drag and drop plugins within the advanced mode config would make realms really worth the money. Once again, all these changes would not impede on the intentionally simple Realms design and are additional options that aren't required to be used by casual users. But let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching.